I'm Pastor Ed Blonsky. Welcome to Scripture and Prayer Time from St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Early Childhood Center in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And today I'm going to be reading from 2 Samuel 20, and then our prayers will, in, will begin with Psalm 28. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, there happened to be there a worthless man whose name was Sheba, the son of Bikri, a Benjaminite. And he blew the trumpet and said, We have no portion in David, and we have no inheritance in the sons of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So all the men of Israel withdrew from David and followed Sheba, the son of Bikri. But the men of Judah followed their king steadfastly from the Jordan to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten concubines whom he had left to care for the house, and put them in a house under guard and provided for them, but he did not go into them. So they were shut up until the day of their death, living as if in widowhood. Then the king said to Amasa, Call the men of Judah together with, to me within three days, and be here yourself. So Amasa went to summon Judah, but he delayed beyond the set time that had been appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba the son of Bichri will do us more harm. Then Absalom, take your Lord's servants and pursue him, lest he get himself to fortified cities and escape from us. And there went out after him Joab's men and the Carathites and the Pelathites and all the mighty men. They went out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone that is in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet them. Now Joab was wearing a soldier's garment, and over it was a belt with a sword in its sheath fastened on his thigh. And as he went forward, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Is it well with you, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him, but Amasa did not observe the sword that was in Joab's hand. So Joab struck him with it in the stomach and spilled his entrails to the ground without striking a second blow. And he died. Then Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's young men took his stand by Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab. And Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the highway, and anyone who came by seeing him stopped. And when the man saw that all the people stopped, he carried Amasa out of the highway into the field and threw a garment over him. When he was taken out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. And Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to Abel of Beth Makah, and all the Bicharites assembled and followed him in. And all the men who were with Joab came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Makah. They cast up a mound against the city, and it stood against the rampart, and they were battering the wall to throw it down. And a wise woman called from the city, Listen, listen, tell Joab, come here, that I may speak to you. And he came near her, and the woman said, Are you Joab? He answered, I am. And then she said to him, Listen to the words of your servant. And he answered, I am listening. And then she said, They used to say in former times, Let them ask, let them but ask counsel at Abel. And so they settled the matter. a matter. I am one of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why will you swallow up the heritage of the Lord? Joab answered, Far be it from me. Far be it that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not true. But a man of the hill country of Ephraim, called Sheba, the son of Bichri, has lifted up his hand against King David. Give him up alone, and I will withdraw from the city. And the woman said to Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to you over the wall. And then the woman went to all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and threw it out to Joab. So he blew the trumpet, and they dispersed from the city, every man to his home. And Joab returned to Jerusalem the king. Now Joab was in command of all the army of Israel, and Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, was in command of the Carathites and the Pe Pelathites. And Adoram was in charge of the forced labor. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was the recorder, and Shiva was secretary. And Zadok and Abiathar were priests, and Ira, the Jairite, was also David's priest. So just more stories of how David... Um, conquers the land and, and the battles that he is facing uh, after the civil war with Absalom. It was, there was some 
I guess you could say mop up battles that had to be taken place. And so this is what the story is. I guess the, the main lesson here is that um, we need to uh, trust in the Lord. And um, the Lutheran Study Bible has a nice summary of this chapter that I want to share with you. And, um, and maybe it'll help us understand the, the violence of these stories. For David to return to his throne in Jerusalem, a rebellion among the northern tribes of Israel must be stopped. Though David had, has been humbled and brought to repentance for his sins, the shadow of rebellion and violence continues to haunt his reign. Nevertheless, by restoring David to the throne of Israel, the Lord shows his promise to raise up a son of David, whose throne and kingdom shall be eternal. That promise is ultimately fulfilled in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose incarnation, death, and resurrection win every spiritual victory. So it's always pointing us to Jesus. It just may not always be clear uh, exactly the way it's pointing us to Jesus. So just another part of scripture that's uh, quite important, but uh, maybe not all that understandable uh, why we would be reading this. So let's turn to our prayers, and our prayers today will be saw, begin with Psalm 28. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me, lest, if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy, when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil, who speak peace with their neighbors, while evil is in their hearts. Give to them according to their work, and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward, because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the work of his hands. He will tear them down and build them up no more. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exults and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to be our shepherd. He takes our sins away with his death on the cross, and he gives us his life with his resurrection from the grave. And now, just as Jesus healed so many during his earthly ministry, and continues to heal, we're holding up before you those we name in our quiet of our hearts, or are on our minds, or even in the comments section below, that need your healing touch. And Jesus can heal them as well, so we'll hold them up in prayer to you. Bring healing to our land as well. Bring integrity and wisdom to our leaders. And protect those who protect us, those in our nation's military, especially those who are um, recovering and returning from war zones like Afghanistan, and those who protect us on the home front, firefighters and police officers and emergency medical technicians, and also the doctors and nurses in our hospitals who are dealing with this COVID pandemic. And if it be your will, Lord, Please end the COVID then pandemic in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Join me again next time. God's richest blessings to you.